Hey guys, Timmy D with DroneMappingTools.com and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through and show you just how easy it is to plan a LiDAR mission using the UGCS Expert app or desktop program. Very, very easy. And if you are looking for a LiDAR unit, if you need LiDAR, then give me a call. You see the Topo Drone LiDAR 200 Plus that was released this year in 2023. You will not find a better LiDAR unit for the money. So let's go ahead and minimize that. And let's make me a little smaller. Boom. Okay. So here we are. We're looking at the UGCS desktop program. And I'm going to close out the welcome screen. The first thing I want to do is I want to name my mission. I will usually always do it by uh, date 22. I'm going to bring up, I know this is by Walmart in Horn Lake, and it'll even pop up right here. And that'll put me right close to our area. So this is this is the spot here from this corner. This There's a power line running there, over, down this tree line, and all the way to the road. So clearing is already taking place. So this, uh, in the last two weeks, they went in, removed all the trees. So I'll be going back next week and actually reflying this again so we can monitor cut and fill uh, on the site. We are now ready to add a new route. Now I will tell you this, if you import a KML file, you do not even have to find the address and bring it up to start dry, drawing. When you import the KML, it will just take you to the right spot. So as a matter of fact, let's uh, we're gonna do that first. So I'm gonna import a KML file. I'm gonna browse, here it is, Spacebox, Horn Lake. And we want to do a LiDAR area. So I'm going to hit next. And we want to use the M300 next. And there it is. It'll use whatever altitude you have used previously, which was already 197 feet. But let's say I was doing something with my Mavic 3 and it was 328, the default uh, altitude for the Mavic 3. All I'll do is I come in and change it to 197. For the LiDAR unit that I am using, the field of view is 106 degrees. That's not forward, that's actually side to side. It's 106 degrees because that needs to be entered so that it can properly calculate the uh, your path distance from one to the next. So, and we have a side overlap of 50%, which is good. Um, flight speed at 1640. So I'm going to tell you something. Let me bring up. Okay. So now I have a little cheat sheet that I will just pull up on Google Docs. And so if I know that I want to fly about, um, say I want to fly 16 miles an hour, well, that's 20, uh, let's do 15 miles. And that's going to be 22 feet per second. So this right here, I want to change that to 22. There we go, enter. Okay, so we know we wanna do 22 feet per second, about 15 miles an hour will be good for this. I could even probably fly a little faster, but we're gonna we'll leave it like that. If for any reason you wanted to change your, your direction of flight, then you can click on this arrow and then you can just, you can just drag it around right there, okay? That'll change the direction. But now look, I do not, personally prefer to have long, very long flights in the middle and then come out and have just little short ones on the edges. I, I like for them to be even, kind of running the direction of my property lines so that I just have four flight paths that are all basically the same distance. So now we've set the direction. Now, if you look up here, you're gonna see this has a, a smooth turn and this is set in the corner radius. Now. 22 feet or um, seven meters is the maximum that UGCS will accept. You can enter any value above that, but it will not make any changes. And the fact is you do want to have smooth turns because any LIDAR unit, if it was to come, stop, make a very harsh turn to the left and continue on, then you have that very jerky movement and that can affect your IMU for a short period of time. It will recover from that. 
So it'll fly for a distance and it will recover. And, and it's not a, a huge deal. But why even do that when you can tell UGCS, I want to have smooth turns? And you don't need to have a turn any greater than the 22 feet or 7 meters for the radius. You do that, it's, it's very smooth and that's all you need. Now, I will I will do a separate video on uh, doing what is called the loop back, uh, loop turn angles. I'll cover that and just kind of show you some different scenarios, but we won't go into that. That'll be for the another video. Um, let's see here. Now, when you bring in KMLs, this is the first thing that pops up, but we need to add two things to the flight plan. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add our calibration pattern. So I come over here and click on the little figure eight, and then I'm going to just double click somewhere out here. And look, it doesn't matter if your figure eight is inside your flight area or if it's outside, it doesn't matter because later when you bring in your um, flight into something like LiDAR 360 and you uh, clip your um, flight pass, you're going to cut the calibration out of the uh, process anyway. So it doesn't matter if it's in or out, but if for some reason your process does, we'll just set it out here. But I'm going to double click right here. And there's my flight pattern. And you can see this is a 100 foot long by 50 foot wide circle. Your flight pattern doesn't need to be bigger than that. And it certainly doesn't, it can be smaller, a little smaller, but I mean, that's just a, a very good size. And I'm only going to do it once. If for any reason you had a sensor that needed it to be more than once, you can set this passes to. I don't know, 99. You can just sit there and run figure eights all day long. We're going to run one. Now, the next thing we need to add is one waypoint. And I'm going to come up here and just double click. And why do I want to do that? Well, if you notice that uh, now, the first thing also, after we do that, we want we want our figure eight to be first, then, then the waypoint, then the LiDAR mission. The reason... We did that. Let me let me click this and hit delete because I want to show you. When it runs the figure eight, it'll come back and it'll come to this first point and it'll make a hard turn. Now, one thing I wish is that there was this actually had built into the programming to where it would just make a smooth turn into the first leg, but it doesn't. So the solution to that is we add a waypoint. I come up here, and again, we want the and that is correct. We're going to run the figure eight, then the waypoint. And that is so that, oops, let me drag this down, that it'll come, it'll make that hard turn. You know, your IMU could be affected for a short distance, but now you've let the drone, it's now flying in a straight path and it will just continue straight into the mission. And so you're, you're solving the problem by just putting the starting point up a little further ahead so that it has a chance to fly straight. And look, if it doesn't make a perfect straight line, it doesn't matter. I can drag this over. Now, what I do want to do is make sure that my, uh, so my figure eight is at 197. My uh, first point is at 197. And then, of course, the LiDAR mission was also at 197 feet, which you can see right there. So, folks, that is, that's it. It is that simple when you know this is, the coverage I want, I'm going to run about a 50% overlap. If for any reason you wanted higher, then you can just simply change it right here. If you needed lower, you could, but 50% uh, will be really good. And that's it. So now let's go ahead and hide this. And we're going to add a new route. And this one we're going to do from scratch. So I'm going to call this LiDAR planning from scratch. Okay, next, M300, next. I know my return home, I would want that to be about 250 feet in the unlikely event that was even needed. My initial speed, so again, uh, 15 miles an hour, 20, uh, 22 feet per second. So I'm gonna hit that. And maximum flight altitude, 393, but again, I'm going to be flying at 197. So if you were doing a mission and you were flying uh, a 400-foot AGL mission and you're doing train following, 
then this has to be or should be set up even higher because you now have to account for the fact that above your takeoff point, you will in fact be higher than 400 feet because you're following terrain. So uh, this is actually above ground, but it's it's related to your takeoff point. So um, you, would, uh, you would set a higher value there. All right, let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, I'm going to go ahead and draw. What I want to do is come in and just go ahead and draw my LiDAR mission. I like to do that first. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to say just somewhere down here, double click, come up, double click, double click, and double click, and then a right mouse click, and that will end the drawing. In this case, you see that this, this is stopping a little short. And so all I'm going to do is come up here. I'm going to drag that out. A little bit and that'll probably take care of it now the whole thing is going end to end now look I have already by drawing this box up and beyond I have accounted for the extra distance if you drew it only on the property lines you may want to come down here and say on the um, mm, overshoot let's say you might want to set that to be so like the surveyors Sometimes they'll say, Tim, fly this, and we need 100 feet on all sides. And so I could come down and do 100. And what it's going to do is going to count your pattern will now have a 100 foot extension uh, on, on the overshoot. But let's go ahead and turn that back off. Okay. Now, if I want to do what I can do is actually just do a, let's do it like that. Okay. On the area buffer, we have accounted for 100 feet in on all directions. So if you want to do it that way, and then you still see we would have to come down and drag this out so that this this will come all the way down. But I'm going to take that back to zero because what I did is I just drew my area to account for what I need to fly plus an extra border. And again, we've already talked about the radius. So that's going to be here at this uh, 22 feet. That's the maximum. And again, let me show you what happens. If I go to, let's go to a, a five foot radius. See how tight that is? And then if I even went down to say one, now it's almost a, it's like that's a stop and turn. And we do not, we do not want that. So I'm gonna take that back up to 22, which is the maximum. You could put 2200 and nothing would change. So 22 is the max. And oh, so now we're gonna add in we're going to add in our pattern. So let's double click. And it's also going to already have the 100 by 50. It's at 197 feet. That's good. And we want to add a first waypoint. I'm going to click that right there. And what I should have done was just went ahead and drug it up. All right. Now we know we want to run our pattern first. I'm going to click on the pattern. I'm going to drag it all the way to the left. All the way to the left, there you go. So pattern, then to the first waypoint, then to the LiDAR mission. So again, this is accomplishing the same thing on this pattern. It is just, uh, oh, you know what? Look, the first waypoint is at 250, and I want that at 197. I want it to be the same. So there we go. There's our first waypoint. Gives us a little time to be straight before we start into the mission. And look, let's just turn it around. Oops. Right there. So everything is good. I like it. And we're ready to fly. So that is just how easy it is to set up a simple LiDAR mission. Uh, obviously, you can have different scenarios where we need to do some creative uh, planning and have a mission that is accounting for uh, maybe a cell phone tower sticking up in the middle of your area. So I will be doing additional videos and we will cover different scenarios where you may have to work around obstacles, buildings, terrain following, all that kind of good stuff. But in this video, I wanted to show you how easy it is just to do a simple LiDAR mission setup. I hope it's been helpful. 
Stick around for more videos. If you like the content that's on the channel, hit subscribe and it'll let you know when I put out new videos. And so moving forward, we're going to stay with a shorter video platform that's more specific to different uh, topics. And uh, that'll make it easy for people just to find what they're looking for instead of just trying to, I don't know, plow through a one and a half hour video. That's just not, uh, moving forward, we're not going to do that. All right. Hope it's helpful. Give me a like. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.